Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to worship this evening. We begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Opening hymn for this evening is found on the inside cover of our worship bulletin, O Bride of Christ Rejoice. confession of our sins. Dearly loved by the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a troubled and repentant sinner, confess that I have sinned against you in my thoughts, my words, and my actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I am distressed by the sins that trouble me and am deeply sorry for them. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Because of the promise of our Savior Jesus, I forgive you all your sins. Be assured that you are a dear child of God and an heir of eternal life. We continue with the Gloria in Excelsis. <laughs>
continue with the prayer of the day, let us join our hearts together in prayer. Lord God, you continue to provide everything for our salvation and for the salvation of the entire world through Jesus our Savior and through your holy word. Help us to continue to make good and proper use of these things, your word and your sacraments, as we also use our place of worship to be dedicated to you and to our Savior Jesus. We ask this in his holy name, he who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. On this Palm Sunday week, uh, we are reminded of this Jesus' divine majesty and his divine power. As we see Jesus triumphantly ride into Jerusalem, and also in our sermon text we'll be reminded of some of the things that he was doing that day, the miraculous supernatural things that Jesus was performing as the Son of God. And so we join together with those Soviet people on at Palm Sunday. Hosanna, blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Our Old Testament lesson is a prophecy uh, regarding that day in Zechariah chapter 9, beginning at the ninth verse. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your King comes to you. Righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt the foal of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim, and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Here ends our Old Testament lesson. Our psalm for the day is taken from portions from Psalm 118. We begin by singing the refrain. <laughs> perfume on Jesus' feet at the dinner in Bethany, which was given in Jesus' honor. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, 
Tell him that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them, and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing untying that colt? They replied, The Lord needs it, as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. Now the crowd that was with him when he, would, when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had given this miraculous sign, went out to meet him. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna! Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! We continue with the hymn. said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, If you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you, and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another, because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. The crowd that had come for the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the King of Israel! Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. We continue again with the hymn. Galilee. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, 
This is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet as it is written. Say to the daughter of Zion, do not be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming to you, gentle and seated and riding on a donkey's colt, the foal of a donkey. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that they had done these things to him. Here ends our gospel lesson. We now turn to our sermon hymn for this evening, uh, hymn 411. 411 will sing the first three stanzas. <laughs> nice feelings toward them, we almost begrudgingly would acknowledge that uh, what they did was pretty nice or good, and yet I suppose you and I also might be tempted, if we didn't say it out loud, we might be tempted in the back of our minds to be thinking, show off, or, well, big deal, who cares, um, wasn't that big deal anyway. I mean, if we've got that sin cropping up in our heads and our minds and our hearts, 
it, it's hard to take something, even that was done well and in a good way, um, the way it should be taken. Now it's interesting to note that in our text for this evening as we focus on this Palm Sunday events, and especially on this section from Matthew 21, we hear this uh, almost, what's the word, offense. The leaders of the Hebrews had taken offense at what the children were saying and singing uh, to Jesus in the temple area. And they feign this offense and they say, do you hear, as they uh, pretty much yell this at Jesus, do you hear what these children are saying? As if he's supposed to stop them. And we heard that earlier in our harmony lesson, right? The Pharisees uh, said, uh, teacher, stop your disciples, rebuke your disciples from saying these things. And, and Jesus said to them, if they will not cry this out, the stones will. So as we look at these things that the children are saying here in Matthew 21, we want to know uh, it's a good uh, reason why we have to hear what these children are singing and saying. Because of the question that we hear at the beginning of our text. And there was this question. As Jesus rides triumphantly into Jerusalem, what's the question? But who is this? Who is this? The whole city was stirred and shaken, it says. And yet, as Jesus uh, hears and acknowledges these praises by the children, notice, they were giving the right and appropriate response and answer to this question of who Jesus is. Now, as Jesus uh, comes into the city, we're told that the whole city was stirred. And this uh, verb for being stirred, shaken, quaken, is the same uh, verb that you would use for an earthquake, setting off seismic activity and just rocking the place. And this is the verb that the Holy Spirit uses for Jesus. He just shook the place with all the activity that was going on around him as he comes down from Bethphage and on the Mount of Olives and then rides triumphantly into Jerusalem with all of these praises and these messianic phrases being said by the people. And if you'll notice, this prophet Jesus, the prophet Jesus, did something uh, as he comes into the temple area. As he comes into the temple area, he overturned and drove out. He overturned and threw out the people who were changing the money. Uh, in other words, during this Old Testament festival of the Passover, you're going to have people from all over the world coming in, uh, Jews from all over the world, and uh, proselytes coming all over from the world, and they're going to bring their offerings. Well, here's the money changers here. We're going to, we're going to change all your money for you. And then there were those selling doves and things like that. Now, the problem was this. And I'll kind of, I mean, today was opening day, not at Amer uh, family, American family field. But it was opening day for the Brewers today. And not the best day for opening, but okay. But if they were at uh, home today, and you were sitting in the stadium, what things would you have heard being yelled out uh, while you were sitting there in the stadium? You would have heard something like, peanuts, get your peanuts, right? And there's even the people that sell programs, so they're talking and yelling about their programs. And then, so that's all going on, because people are selling stuff like crazy while the people are sitting in the stands. And of course, you can also talk about the prices, right? So you want to buy a beer at the stadium. How much is that going to set you back? Uh, anywhere from $9 to 12 bucks, depending upon which kind of beer you want and uh, things like that. So 9 bucks for a beer. Does that sound reasonable? Does that sound, oh, what a deal for me, right? And in the same way, Notice that Jesus does not only defend God's house because they've turned it into a market. He says, as he quotes 
from the Old Testament, you've turned it into a den of robbers, thieves. In other words, there was a sin going on here. God's house had been turned into a market, and they were using God's house in his name to make a buck. And so Jesus, in defense of God's uh, name, his word, his house, he overturns, throws out these people who are only there to make a buck and not there to support the work of the gospel and its saving word. This uh, same verb that is used for throwing them out, it's the same word that God and Jesus uses at the end of the age. Will be thrown out into utter darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. If people who are even close to God's temple and people who are close to God's word but are there for the wrong reason, and sometimes you can say, sometimes people even use God's uh, temple to try to make a buck. If a person does not believe in Jesus as their Savior from sin, look what's going to happen. And Jesus gives us a little glimpse as he clears out that temple area uh, in our text for this evening. It's a good reminder to us, too. We always have to be careful how we make use of God's house and that it be dedicated to his name and to his saving word, and that it be taught in its truth and purity. The next challenge, though, comes uh, from... Uh, after uh, these children are singing and Hosanna, all of a sudden we have the people challenging. The chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did and the children shouting in the temple area, Hosanna to the son of David, and they were indignant. They were angry. Do you hear what these children are saying they confronted Jesus with? And it's interesting how their unbelief looks at miracles, the wonderful things it was referencing, which was healing uh, the blind and the lame that came to him in the temple area. So he's healing people like crazy right after he rides into Jerusalem, and they come to him, and he's healing them. And they were angry that he was doing this. He was carrying out God's work. He was fulfilling the Old Testament prophecies about him. The children were singing the praises of him who is the Son of God. Hosanna to the Son of David. And yet their unbelief rejected the healings. Their unbelief scolded the Savior in what he was doing and judged him. And as they see others praise him, they are jealous and angry and upset. And that uh, green-eyed monster, as they sometimes call it, jealousy, it causes people in, 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 to do lots of things badly. But worse than that is unbelief. Unbelief will definitely cause people to do things poorly, badly, wrongly. And, and it was unbelief that was driving them. Now, as we gather on this Palm Sunday uh, week, notice that if it were not for God and his almighty power, his miraculous power at work in our hearts, in our lives, in our minds, where would we be? I thought uh, today when I was preparing for the sermon, I would uh, just check something on the internet about a question that popped up in my mind. And so I went over this list and list and list of things, answers that people had written. I was really shocked because you would go from a Christian who would try to explain this, and then all of a sudden you go from an unbeliever, and he would just say wicked stuff about Jesus. I mean, just absolutely wicked stuff that they posted online, and how we don't even know if Jesus existed, and all this kind of stuff, and worse than that, a lot worse than that. Stuff you, you shouldn't even say in public, much less post. So there again, today here we are, same deal. Faith or unbelief, and look at how unbelief just rejects the wonderful things that God does. So we should not be surprised at this. We should not be surprised at this. Jesus had to remind his disciples, if they did it to me, 
If they hated me first, they will do it to you. They will hate you also. So when things come our way that we maybe don't expect, we have to always remember that unbelief will act in a very wrong way and at times reject those wonderful things that God has done. And yet we still have to continue to uh, show them love and respect and gentleness as the apostle reminds us also. And we don't live by the sword. And Jesus had to remind us during Lent too. But now we got this awesome thing that happens. The children are giving the right and appropriate answers as to the question, who is this? It's Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. And notice what they're saying. Hosanna. Hosanna. Beautiful. Uh, one word in the Hebrew is a beautiful uh, little prayer. Hosanna. God save. It, it's really an entreaty. It, you're asking God. God save. Hosanna. It's also an act of praise. Hosanna. And as we continue in this Palm Sunday and lead into Holy Week, we have many reasons to praise God. First of all, Hosanna to the Son of David. Because God kept his word and he fulfilled the sending of his one and only son, Jesus. Hosanna to the Son of David and the Son of God. And the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, and the rulers of the people, they all knew these messianic phrases. They understood that when they said, Hosanna to the Son of David, and said that about Jesus, that they were confessing that he is the Christ, the Son of God, the one who was coming to save us from our sins. These children had hit the nail on the head. It was exactly true. And notice how Jesus acknowledges this. Do you hear what these children are saying? And what does Jesus say? Yes. Yes, I hear what they are saying. And then he chided those uh, rulers by quoting it from the Old Testament. Have you never read from the mouths or the lips of children and infants you have ordained praise? And God does miracles like this every day. You know, sometimes, I even made a joke about this the other night. Uh, Art, Art Linkletter used to have that show, right? Kids say the darndest things, right? And sometimes our young, who have been taught about their Savior Jesus, will just say the most interesting things in the most interesting way. And from the lips of even children and infants, God continues to bring forth praise. Praise of his son Jesus, our Savior. Praise to himself. And praise from their hearts and their mouths and their minds. And... He does that from our mouths too. And, and it's pretty cool to join in some of these hymns uh, for, I mean it comes like Christmas just once a year. Here we are at Palm Sunday and we get to sing and join in these same praises. Which, because of what Jesus did for us, we're all going to be saying this together. Every single believer on that last day. And from our lips, we're going to be able to join together and I'll, as John said, just loud, unbelievably loud, as all these believers and the angels in heaven join together in these wonderful praises of him. And as we gather together in God's house, notice where we're at. We're at a place that's dedicated to prayer and praise of our Lord and Savior, which is a wonderful blessing. And as we continue to focus on these words from God himself to us, what a privilege it is that we get to hear this publicly, safely, in peace and stability. And there aren't any governments or government officials or police and the like trying to break down our door or arrest us, as is going on in some other countries. And from this house of prayer, we get to uh, acknowledge, confess, and praise that this Jesus, our Savior from sin, is the Savior of the entire world. Every nation, people, tribe, and language. And access to our God is so easy, isn't it? We call upon the name of the Lord wherever we're at and from whatever situation we may be in. 
And as we now uh, pass this Palm Sunday and go into uh, Holy Week, we get to review again the things that this wonderful Jesus and the wonderful things that he did uh, as we see on Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and, and Easter, the wonderful things he did for us. So, even though it's a review of things we have already heard, may our hearts and our mouths and our minds continue to help also in our lives outside of this house of prayer to give other people the answer, who is this? Who is this? This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. He is the son of David, the son of God, our Savior. And so may our hearts and our lives, may our support of missions, may our support of God's church continue to help answer this question for many more people who in not belief don't yet know who this Jesus is, but they sure need to know so that they are not thrown out into utter darkness on that last day. And if it weren't for God, we wouldn't be looking at, we would be looking at that too. But by God's grace, we know and we praise Hosanna to the Son of David. Amen. May the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep and guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now turn to the middle of page 7 in our worship bulletin as we join together in the two hymn verses there. Sunday, help us to receive your word, your work of redeeming us, your wonderful miracles with thanksgiving, and marvel at what that ride would mean, even death later on on a cross that week. Help us to continue to use your word faithfully and to apply it to our hearts and lives, and to also let that word be uh, displayed in our lives to those around us so that all are able to know and understand who is this when that question is asked about you. Help us to keep our places of worship dedicated as places of houses and houses of prayer and worship for all nations, as we also continue to support mission work and those sent out in your holy name. Grant that our leaders and all those who are in called positions continue to teach the truth of your word only and not depart from it. Continue to bless us in all of our outreach and labors. We ask this all in Jesus' name, who has also then taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We go back to hymn 411. Uh, for our closing verses 411 and now we close out with verses 4 and 5. <laughs>